Faisal, you, you seem to have such a unique gift of seeing. And uh, in the work, we talk a lot about essence. And I think it would be really helpful if you could de deconstruct that a little bit and maybe share a bit about your path and how your capacity developed and um, any stories you'd like to share about that would be great. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think we as human beings are gifted with so many things, but they are dormant. They are not utilized or activated. We are so much engaged in our ego and level of mind activity and worldly humdrum that we leave behind capacities of the soul, capacity of the spirit that's being given to us. We're, we're gifted by the divine, by creation, by such things. We have now at least those five senses. We can see, we can hear, we can taste, and we focus them only on the material plane. But the soul also has capacities of seeing, and it is also stored in the body that they can be really cultivated within the body. Capacities of seeing, capacities of tasting, sensing, that are not just about the material world. I remember I used to hear a lot about psychic seeing auras and light and used to scare the hell out of me and I thought this hocus pocus and get me out of there. And uh, by time I felt more at ease and I felt well, if they see maybe it's true. Being a scientist knowing that the mind body has an electromagnetic field, you know, then it, it, meant, uh, it was reasonable to think that this electromagnetic field has colors and light and, and what they call aura. You know? So some people have sense of, can see it, why not? You know? Little by little, uh, the, the um, hidden realm and the capacity of the soul began to be more familiar, that there may be something more. The sixth sense, I don't know so many things, but I was always afraid of the psychic realm and getting lost in the psychic realm and hallucination and I remember the 60s and groovy and LSD and all of those things like I thought get me out of there. By the time I got engaged in spirituality and meditation. In this lifetime I had a, a gift, a capacity of imagination. You know? Maybe because we didn't have TV, maybe because life was so miserable, we could really imagine <laughs> genies coming out of the bottle, Shahrazad coming in a <laughs> glorious way. And, you know. So my, my imagination was so wild, even though I was interested in science and mathematician, but whenever I had free time, I, was, I would fantasize. And then I, I, in teenager, I cultivated a, a, sense for the language and poetry, and that even kindled my imagination. So I could imagine <coughs> many things, almost like a whole story, you know, Sinbad is traveling and falling in love and they lived happily ever after. It was my daily food, my spiritual soul nourishment food. So being able to be in the imaginal realm and not freaking about it, you know, <clears throat> I think that enhanced the inner capacity of seeing. You know, as I said, we are all <coughs> sensors or seers. You know, if any of us now, if I tell any of us now who is listening to this uh, video, can you imagine your car? Can you imagine your uh, living room? Can you imagine whatever? Imagination, you know, most people have a picture or an image in their mind. This is seeing. This is a form of seeing. And if we think <coughs> we can cultivate it, we can relax and we can look more and more and we can do breathing and relaxation and activate the glands of seeing, uh, uh, purify our nervous system from the crud in it, which is so much um, uh, beliefs and ideas and images stored on our glands, stored in our nervous system, on our nervous system, by breathing, by uh, 
relaxation. This crud of the personality of the mind can, can fall off and the capacity of inner seeing or inner hearing or inner tasting increases. Like uh, Beethoven was uh, deaf, yet he wrote music that are awesome, you know. Where do those masters of music hear those celestial spheres and music like that? So they have inner seeing, you know. I remember I had a friend of mine, uh, he was a musician, guitar. He said, I can detect the sound of this chakra or that chakra, one third of the chakra, one half of the chakra, and can compose music according to these sounds, you know, with the chakras. <coughs> <coughs> Another friend of mine, she could see the color of the chakras. See, this chakra is more vivid, this chakra is dull, this chakra is more open. So I was, I was really fascinated that we have capacities in our soul, dormant. It is stored in our body and by cultivating them, um, uh, we can really develop whatever we call inner seeing. Uh, I loved it. I loved it more than TV, more than anything else, you know, just to sit and look in my meditation and I see sometimes colors or light or, or visions, you know, or um, imagine a realm, you know, uh, so much. Then a quantum leap happened to me in this journey, unexpected. I worked really hard, you know, from 66 to 76, really hard, relentless meditation sometimes. I would take time out and meditate about, you know, 16 hours a day, sometimes, you know, uh, 18 hours a day, you know, meditation, breathing, uh, whirling. I was really relentless. I wanted to awaken. I said, like, you know, I, I either die or awaken. You know, I have to <laughs> have Enlightenment or bust. Yes. <laughs> you know, forish style, you know, how to do to have some intensity or drama. So in <coughs> due to the <coughs> cultivation of personal power, meditation, breathing, processing issue, releasing emotions, doing a lot of bioenergetics, uh, Reiki and all of those things, I think made my system so open that when I was in the presence of my teacher, my guru, and I asked him, you know, about would I be enlightened in this lifetime? He said, he started laughing. He said, everybody is enlightened, but they don't realize it. So relax. <laughs> you know, it's like a fish. Tartang, Tartang Toku? Tartang Toku. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was like a fish asking, where is the ocean? You know, so he was laughing. You know, like, <laughs> what an absurd question. You are in it. And his ease and his joy and his presence allowed my personal power to expand. His presence really amplified it to open up the veil and to merge with him. And I recognized the transparency of our Buddha nature, of our enlightened nature. And that was like a huge cleansing of the nervous system from issues stored in it. The whole body is like a memory banks, you know, and the, the, the absolute or pure awareness of Buddha nature can work if we really bring it in the body as a cleanser, as a purifier. Most in the spiritual journey, they go to enlightenment, they dissolve in enlightenment, but they do see subtle and severe splitting. Their consciousness dissolves enlightenment, but their lower centers, their instinct, their perineum, sacrum, locks up with fear. The ego go hides there. So they're enlightened from here above, and so much, uh, what they call it spiritual bypassing or sinks down there. You know, I was afraid of that. So I used to say, no, I won't dissolve in the absolute in being till it descends in my body completely. So every day I sit, meditate, I am in, in the absolute, but not totally dissolving in it, still maintaining little ego or little <laughs> stubbornness or something. Please come down. In the process of purification of the body, my ability to see and perceive increased. You know, I could see visions, I could see you know, taras and visions, things like that, so many beautiful. But I wasn't also focusing on them so much. Then in 78, that was in 76, 78 I came, 
back to America and I'm with a friend of mine. Um, I loved him dearly and I really I knew him from childhood and he was handicapped, you know, and one leg was almost uh, paralyzed. And I, I felt I was in glory, I was in power, I was really like in this glorious field. I thought, why don't I just invoke the field and in the field do healing? Because my orientation was about healing. It wasn't about psychologizing, nor about uh, spiritual bypass. I just wanted to help myself and others heal. Mm -hmm. So every day we meet, I will get into the presence of being and either channel the energy with my hand to his leg or my consciousness to his leg. And it was amazing as I do that, as if being started revealing certain qualities. I could see this is white light coming. So, okay, I relax into the white light. I used to love light. I meditate and I go in the light, you know. But with, with my teacher, he took me beyond the light. The light was a phenomena and he went to the source of light, which is clear radiance. So with my friend, I would see and, uh, you know, channel qualities, sometimes white light, sometimes golden light, sometimes silver, sometimes gold. And I could feel densities in my hand. And I have the vision seeing, knowing, it is not like seeing with the eye, it is seeing, knowing, feeling, sensing, it's a very different kind of seeing, you know? And I see, okay, I see, I feel like I see, I see gold going, and I see the gold going you know, from my hand or my intention from the field to the nerve inside the leg. I said, it seems like going there. And he was not a seer, but he was a sensor. He said, wow, I could even taste it. I could even taste the gold, you know? So I thought, oh, wow, wonderful. We keep channeling the uh, qualities of essence to maybe build up the, uh, you know, the, the leg, the muscles. I was thinking of the muscles and then some substance came very dense, dense like uh, liquid um, pearly. Like imagine you have a pearl and you make it liquid dense like that, not solid gold, but not solid pearl, but pearly. So it felt like a resilient, like cushiony, like a sponge. And that quality goes in the muscle, you know. Then another quality like streams of diamonds goes around the nerve and gold seems to go through the, the nerve. And then another time green, sometimes a green liquid, sometimes a green light, sometimes a green um, diamonds go to the fascias and the tissues. We were fascinated, I, at least I was fascinated that these things, these qualities were coming and I wonder what were these? And we call them essences. Okay, so let me let me just interrupt here. So you were you were this was inner seeing for you yes. in color, in in uh, substance, in texture, yes. and your friend was tasting. Yes, you so could was, sense was it. Was gold honey? What was gold? Yes, uh, gold felt like sweetness, and somehow you could really feel it. He said, "Even my teeth can feel golden." You know, oh, wow. some some people sensitivity amazing. Some people's sensitivity, you mentioned the metal, they feel, I feel metal in my teeth, or in my mouth. He was also a good sensor in his body. He said, I feel this warm, dense liquid going in my body. And I say, I say, oh, I see gold, you know, or I see this dense wine substance moving. So I sense it too, I sense the warmth, I sense also the taste of it, richness, you know, like pomegranate, or uh, gold or things like that. These are capacities in the soul of sensing a hidden domain that we don't hear about. It's very rare that we hear anything mentioned about essence. It is always mystical, mysterious, esoteric experiences, you know. You hear about it, very little you hear. Sufis talk about Khudr, green one. Uh, Tibetans talk about Vajra and diamonds or uh, green tari. They, they mention gold, but they mention it with so much reserved, you know, uh, attitude. Because I, I think they don't want just seduce people into this dimension and then they get to be essentialist and they don't reach home. They, they get you know, intoxicated with essence and become drunkard elephants. 
So uh, they, they said, oh, first reach essence, once you reach essence, this uh, I mean reach uh, source, then these essential qualities come. So little by little, for, for example, I heard from the Sufis about the Lataif, you know, that was in 75, 76, and it was related to me, not as black light coming or green light coming, it was like black death <laughs> and yellow death <laughs> and you know, green death. And why death? You don't want to go. Like, you know, one death after another, <laughs> I thought I came here to live. But it's stuck in my mind. There are colors, there are lights, and they have feelings, you know. And when this comes, it, you know, like when red death, it takes away the fear of humanity. And black death uh, takes away the doubt and takes away the um, self-resistance, you know, the, the self dissolved goes away, you know, and uh, white uh, essence or this uh, c comes as the surrender of the will. Your will is in alignment with the divine will. And yellow death was the joy of leaving behind humanity and their suffering. Essence is joyous. So I received transmission about these things, but then later on 78, 79, we started downloading those qualities and what we call the lataif, which is the perfume of essence. It's not essence yet, it's the perfume of essence. It's like misty, gentle, subtle qualities started to emerge in our system, feeling fluffy, feeling soft, but it's also the softnesses have different effects. One releases the heart, one releases the head, one releases the belly, and they had different colors. I could see this is white, this is black, this is green. And from there, <coughs> from there on, the capacity of seeing increased. And it, it, it reached a level of becoming like an inner diamond comes. And this is like the third eye, an inner diamond. And when it comes, it, it has the ability to focus your inner uh, capacity of looking and you can see what is there. And that seeing was not just to see the colors and the light and the texture and all of that. It also, each quality as it comes, the information, the knowledge relating to its nature manifest. Like I see green and I feel kindness, compassion. So I know green has to do with compassion. And I see red and I feel courage and strength. So the knowledge of its nature also manifested, seeing it, knowing it. And it also revealed spontaneously the issues that are blocking it. Mm. Like I see red and I feel I'm afraid as deep fear in me begin to awaken. I'm I see how much I'm afraid of humanity. I see how much I am um, afraid to let go. Then I go deeper into that. I see how much I'm afraid to leave the house. I'm afraid to leave my mother. Then it tied with, with uh, psychology, separation, anxiety. So, wow, that's what they mean by separation anxiety. This separation anxiety blocked the sphere of life, of going out, of adventuring. My, my mom scared me of the world, and my dad was too protective and all of this. Made my red essence shrink. And so when the sphere about life went away, my red essence blossomed. You know? So I feel courage. I can go hiking, I can go, I don't know, adventure, I can do all so many things I wouldn't do before. You know? So this seeing had also knowing, seeing, knowing, feeling. These capacities of seeing, knowing, feeling, hearing, all of those things are inherent in our system. We just need to cultivate them. Some people, it happened to them through empowerment or grace. Some people born with it from previous reincarnation. Some people cultivate it through hard work. So I, be, I believe it's accessible really to humanity. You know, we, we can it sounds, it, it, I'm sorry to interrupt Faisal, but it sounds like cultivating it for you really had to do with love for the person. Um, a lot of work, as you said, many hours a day for med meditating for, for many years, but also the subtle tantra of languaging the, the different uh, kinds of, of uh, experience with essence with one another. 
sounds like that really brought it forward. Sharing with, with companions, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Companionship, sangha, friends, it really helps a lot. You know, like even though I was seeing, but I was also very young and I was afraid, am I hallucinating? You know, right, right. So when I say, I see gold and my friend said, I can't even taste it. And the third one says, I can feel it. It, it gave me confidence that my seeing is the truth. Then little by little, I started reading a little bit the Sufi, they talk about it. You know, um, I remember uh, the Buddha families, you know, you know, they have those colors and textures and you know, all of those things. Then it, <coughs> it showed more and more that it exists in, in those systems, but they usually leave it for private initiation, private empowerment, you know, they only share it between each other, you know, in, in advanced stages, because I think they fear the ego and they don't know how to deal with the ego and narcissistic issues and, you know, what we have. So they keep it till the person reaches maturity. You know, the more they mature, it opens up for them. You know? But I think the time we are in uh, needs an escalation of humanity retrieving their soul, their essence, the kingdom we are living in, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and we are messing it up, you know? So I think essence is downloading so many things, capacities, visions, guidances, and some of it is this enjoyment of the inner senses. You know? Some people, they have beautiful eyes and they like to see. I remember when I was young, I used to study with a, a teacher at the university. He was an artist and I would go take courses in art. And somehow I could merge with his eyes and I could see how he sees. Mm. But fascinating, the depth of the picture and the color and the form and the shape, you know, my eyes was not as trained, you know. So by tuning it to his eyes, I received the transmission, you know. Mm. And this is how the gurus transmit. They transmit the teaching and the quality itself. But there has been so much emphasis on the uh, absolute nature that in the middle we bypass the huge dimension that I feel in this huge dimension is where uh, the devil exists. The devil exists in the details, in the intricacies, the richness of the soul, the evolution of the soul. And because we are afraid of the devil, we left the, you know, we throw the baby with the bathwater. Because to focus on the details of essence and the richness of essence and the gaining of the soul evolution brings so many issues that so many, sorry to say, the absolutists want to transcend, you know, want to go beyond. Then all the issues sink under the carpet, go stuck in the solar plexus, go stuck in the perineum, and, the, you know, and, and they suffer a lot. And I work with many teachers who are meditators and all of those things. They are so, many, so enlightened in the head. And the pelvis was so jammed. Their wife sent them to me to work with me because she wasn't to, to, make, to make love to her. She didn't want to make love. And he said, let's go to the absolute. Who cares the absolute? Make love in the absolute. <laughs> became you no know, conflicting. Mm -hmm. So the essential domain is very important. It's a beautiful. Inner seeing brings beauty beyond imagination. There are certain things uh, so meant so beautiful. I don't think we can contain them within the emotional body, even though they might arise an emotion of awe or beauty or something. But some of them are way beyond the emotional body. Some of them are way beyond the physical body, but they are access accessible to us. And that's in the domain of essence. The spirit can spread its wings and fly, but I don't like to fly. I like to receive. <laughs> I like to land. 